What's up, everybody? Mr. Gem Squid School here, back at you with another Splatoon 3 video. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe. <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, you, 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 if you saw a video from yesterday, you know where we're going here. These are not the sub weapons that I think are strongest. These are the sub weapons that I think are best designed that make for the most fun game. Um, I think that there is. A lot of bloat, actually, in the sub-weapons. I think that they could be trimmed down considerably, and that the game not only would still be fine, would actually be improved. Um, case in point, we'll start with my top tier here. I literally would not mind if the game of Splatoon 3 gave you only a Splat Bomb, or only a Burst Bomb. Maybe maybe make it so that you could, like, choose between the two, and that would be a cool amount of variety. I think that's an amazing game. What I don't like is that a lot of weapons don't get something that has as much utility as one of these things, and has to struggle against weapons that do. Um, there's such a big deficit functionally in what these things offer compared to a lot of other sub-weapons. Um, and... These ones, like, you, literally any weapon can use them. They're pretty easy to understand, but they're difficult to master. There's so much variety to how you can use them. I think they're just the perfect sub-weapons. Now, obviously, there are some weapons that, if you give them, say, a burst bomb, I'm thinking of, you know, the S1 E-Leader that had it, probably a little bit powerful on that weapon. <laughs> um, and I could see, you know, a case being made that some weaker subs just need to exist, for the sake of being able to give them to the powerful main weapons to bring them down a peg. Um, and so maybe there's an argument to be made for those there, but I don't know. I'd rather you just make everything feel fun and powerful um, and, instead of deciding that we're going to nerf some weapons by giving them a kit that that weapon doesn't really like or can't really use as well and make it feel like it's half finished even though it can compete. There might also be an argument that, you know, if people don't like bomb spam, that maybe you uh, would prefer not to have everybody have a splat bomb or, you know, something like that, where there are just going to be bombs flying all the time in neutral and it's going to feel like a minefield out there. Whereas if one or two of the weapons has like a sprinkler or a splash wall, now it's a lot more manageable and the game isn't going to feel that way. I guess I could see it. Um, just for the sake of clearing the air. But I think if, you know, that ends up being the case, if you tone down the sub-weapon a little bit more, now all of a sudden it's toned down for everybody and you're, you know, not creating a balance problem because those are the only things that you have. You know, if you've just got your splat bomb and your burst bomb, then, okay, we've just made sub-weapons a little weaker. Like, everything still has a decent sub-weapon, but just sub-weapons in general are being toned down so that you have to use the main weapon a little bit more. That's cool to me. Um, but having a sub-weapon that doesn't feel good while somebody else does have a sub-weapon that feels incredible, that happens, I think, a lot too much in the way that the kits are currently designed. And so I would honestly just strip down the game to far fewer of these things and make sure that they were all well balanced against each other and make sure that you have a wide variety of kits that have access to them and worry about getting more of the variety from the main weapons and the specials. Um, now, I'm fine with having some other you know versions of them. Um, I think that if you're going to add more, the way I would want it to be done is to give things something like Splat Bomb or Burst Bomb by default but if you think there's like a super unique synergy that you could create with another weapon, then maybe you give it one of these next few. Um, Fizzy Bomb, I think, is very neat. Um, it's a lot more complex to use. It has a lot more um, 
ways that you can throw it um, because you can just put it out without charging it and use it for movement. You can get a certain number of charges if you want a certain number of explosions, um, but you can also you know, choose to take more or less time to charge it. So th there's some interesting tactics to how you throw one of these things. But also, I think that there are some weapons that don't want this because it's slow and it's going to encourage you to stand back and just like throw these things from a distance. Um, I think a full game consisting of only these things would be really spammy and annoying. Um, so you probably only want to give this to weapons that need like a mobility tool or a lot of extra paint that their main weapon isn't providing. Otherwise, this kind of just becomes either frustrating or slow and like too slow for the weapon to really want to try and keep up with. So not a huge fan of every case that this can get used for, but I think that there are a lot of really interesting ones and a lot of main weapons, frankly, that this can kind of save sometimes, which is really nice to have. Autobomb is really fun. I love that little guy. He's the, he's everybody's favorite, right? He's the, the chicken. He, he goes and waddles up to you and he does his job. Like, what's not to like about Mr. Autobomb? Um, it's a lot more ink efficient, which is something that a lot of weapons need in a bomb. Um, it's a great information tool for some weapons that need that information tool. I think there's a lot good going on with this. It is a little bit weaker balance wise. And I think that's a, a part of its design as much as anything else. Like I, I think that's hard to, to balance around, but I think there are some weapons that don't want to cough up the amount of ink that it takes to throw a splat bomb. And those weapons would love one of these. Um, there are definitely some weapons where this is like near the top of their list. So definitely, you know, give one of those weapons, one of these things. Suction bombs are, I look at them like splat bombs, but a little less fun. Um, there are some neat things you can do with them based on where you can stick them. Uh, like underneath grates is always hilarious. I love throwing a suction bomb underneath the mincemeat grates and then seeing someone walk over the grates and get splatted. Um, there are a lot of really fun use cases for that. Obviously on tower control, it can be a menace. Um, but I think the majority of times that you're throwing one of these, it's just a little bit slower, a little bit more cumbersome and i'd rather have a splat bomb in a lot of the cases where i'm using this in just like one-on-one -on -one engagements or for for zoning someone even though the the explosion radius is bigger on the suction bomb just that extra fuse time makes it so that you have to be a lot more conservative with the way that you throw these things to make sure that they're actually covering something um so it's not bad, and maybe for weapons that you want to encourage to be a little bit more passive, maybe you go for that. I don't know why you would want that, but maybe that's something you're hoping for. Um, I don't know. I could totally live with a game that does not have suction bombs, but they are great for a weapon to have, and there are definitely some advantages that make them fun to have, so I'm not, I'm not going to complain. Torpedoes are really cool because of the number of different ways you can use them. The fact that you can roll a torpedo and get out of it what you get from a rolled torpedo is super sick. Um, and the lock-on feature is really cool because it, for it has counterplay, but it forces you to react a certain way. It can be useful in that sense, and it paints a lot in that way. Um, and the fact that like you can roll it and then bounce it to keep it in rolled form, it combos with a lot of stuff. It's, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's tricky because it's kind of competing with Burst Bomb, but kind of not. Um, in the sense that rolling it functions very similarly. Uh, just you're throwing this to get an immediate burst of damage or ink. Um, but I'm fine with having it around. And, you know, as long as it never becomes too oppressive, as long as it's never like too spammable or paints too much or does too much damage, I think it's fine. And I think it's in a relatively healthy place right now. So I'm happy having it around. But again, I think this entire tier, if it weren't in the game, I'd be cool with that. Um, next tier down, this, these are sub weapons that do definitely work for certain weapons. Um, I think having beacons in the game can be cool if you, you know, build around that and have a plan based on that. Um, I think having splash wall on certain weapons is really fun and engaging. Um, it, it's kind of like a mini tentabrella dilemma where, it takes a little while to shred and gives them, you know, a lot of defensive ab ability, but 
They also have to be careful about sitting on one side of it so they don't get popped immediately by a lethal bomb. So I think it's really cool on certain weapons. But on some weapons, they're just not super well equipped to use it especially well. Um, so something like a 52 gal, perfect. But the Explo, I, there, there aren't that many things that it really enhances about the Explosher. I, you know, if it gives it the ability to work against certain backline matchups, then cool. And maybe that's what it needed. But I think that there are a lot of weapons where putting this on just kind of makes it slower or takes away a much needed poke tool that it would really like to have instead. Um, and so you got to be careful about what you give this sub weapon to. Um, I think there are definitely some cases where you're making the game less fun by including this, even though there are some where you're making it more fun. Toxic Mist has some fun use cases um, for team strategies. It can be used in, say, Rainmaker to block the rain from being able to push forward. Um, it can be used to set up fights for other people. Um, it can deny certain areas on the map for a significant amount of time, you know, more than a bomb would deny them for. So some of that can be cool, but the there aren't that many use cases, and a lot of the time this is just a bit weaker than you would be getting from some other sub-weapon, especially outside of Rainmaker. You know, if you're outside of a mode where something needs to move through a choke point quickly, this loses a lot more of its capability. And uh, it just kind of feels like it's robbing your opponents of their agency, but not so much that it feels strong and powerful and you enjoy it. And why not just put a bomb there instead? Um, so this, we're, we're getting towards the, the ones that I'm just like, eh, maybe we just cut this. I like beacons more in a world where we don't have Tacticooler because beacons feel just kind of outclassed by Tacticooler. Like, why would you run something with beacons when your teammates can just be a beacon and you can have more bombs instead? Um, so it's a little weird in the Splatoon 3 context. I, th I think also with bigger maps, it becomes more useful. Um, and that sort of thing could be interesting. In Splatoon 3's maps, it's generally hard to get someone in like behind the enemy team or into a position where like letting them super jump would be especially difficult to deal with. So it's a little bit odd here, but I'm cool with it in theory. In practice, there are not that many kits in the game where it has worked out very well. And I would want the, these used very judiciously, very uh, reluctantly. Next up, at this point, if they just cut them from the game, I'm fine. Um, I do think that curling bombs on like two weapons in the game are actually pretty cool. Um, like the splat roller and the sploosh, it's a really important movement tool for them to be able to get in. And that's kind of a cool aspect of its kit. It was cool on the end parries because those weapons benefited a lot from just getting to the enemy team really fast and being able to engage immediately. But Splatoon 3 map design has made that a lot more difficult to play around. And it just feels really lackluster on most of the weapons it's on. Uh, L3, are you kidding me? Why did they put that on the L3? The L3 gets so little out of that. The L3 is not a fast-moving weapon that wants to get on top of you. It's one of the last weapons in the game that wants to do that. Don't give it a curling bomb. Um, and the more curling bombs there are in the game, I feel the more weapon kits are likely to just not be that great. Um, so I'd rather they err on the side of just not putting this in the game. Point sensor can be a lot of fun. It has decent synergy with things like Trizuka for revealing people, and that can be kind of fun. But it feels like you get a little bit more value out of just putting a bomb on that spot if they're all that clumped up and they can be hit there. Um, I don't know. It, and another thing is that having those players marked generally at a, at a competitive level at least is just going to make that those players play more patiently more passively um wait for it to wear off and i don't know that that really encourages fun fast gameplay um i don't know i, I think having a little bit of a little bit more of the element of surprise in the game isn't necessarily a bad thing 
Um, you know, force people to rely on their paint for vision rather than just putting this on a weapon and being like, now you can see everything. I, I Maybe I'm being too harsh on this, but also I can't forgive this for making the vanilla Splattershot Nova feel like it's a more useful weapon than it is by getting all those assists. Um, I guess it is kind of funny that it can trigger opening Gambit, but... I could definitely leave this, but also if a weapon gets it that can use it well, I totally don't mind. At this point, I uh, we're down in pretty deep, and again, I'm like, literally any weapon I would rather have a splat bomb on. Um, line line marker, angle shooter, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Um, they've done the thing where they've been buffing it very, very slowly. Um, it's still the worst sub in the game, and it's going to be, it seems like, for the rest of Splatoon 3's lifespan, because this thing just has not been doing a lot. It's got insane range, which is kind of nice, and it can use, be used for some damage combos sometimes, but what you lose from not having something you can lob, something you can get up and over a ledge, is just too much. Um, if maybe there were ceilings in all of the maps, and you could actually bank them off the ceiling and hit some sick fall-off shots that way, oh my god, this would be a cool sub. Um, but that's just not the way that the game works. Um, the, I've, I've had conversations with people about, like, okay, how do we buff this? And the answers that we come up with are, like, really transformative before we get to something that feels like, you know, that might actually compete with other subs in the game. Um, like, the, the idea that I keep coming back to was give it five times the range and make the lines do some damage. So you can just put it in a choke point and go boing, 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 all the way down the line... And now, walking through that, you're actually taking a substantial amount of damage as you walk through. Um, like, make it make it like trip wires that are out there for a second or two. Um, that is, like, the level at which we're talking a straight line-of-sight sub actually starts to compete with other stuff. Um, sure, you know, you'd be like, okay, well, then they're just going to put, you know someone who's cracked with their aim up on high ground and tag everyone with this all the way across the map, you know, all the time. And that's going to be a really boring play style with as little damage as it does. I don't even know if that's true. I think you just kind of run out of ink and then you're like, well, I'm not helping anymore and I'm not putting, you know, ink down on the ground. So if I didn't hit those three line marker directs from max range, you know, I don't know. It takes way too much to make this thing function in the game. Right now, it definitely does not function. They've added a little bit of extra paint to it, but, like, unless you have a very specific damage combo with this, it's not fun to use. Um, maybe if they give it some progressive buffs and figure out a way to make it fun, it could be good. But at this rate, it's going to be years before they ever get there. So I'm not holding my breath. Then... These are sub-weapons that I have never found to be more fun than an alternative higher on this list. Um, we'll start with Sprinkler. Sprinkler just does not feel like it does enough unless you're trying to farm for special. And encouraging people to just farm for special and not engage with the enemy team very much is not particularly fun to me. I think there are some neat, goofy things you can do with, like crazy places you can get the sprinkler where they're difficult to deal with but that is about as interesting as the sub weapon gets and it's annoying to actually have to play against that because if your weapon doesn't have a lot of range you might just not have something you can do about that um and it, you know it's a little bit of a mobility tool but you know what else can be used as a mobility tool a fizzy bomb or a burst bomb like you can just put one of those at your feet and if you're trying to use it to block shots, well, if that's a part of the strategy, why not just give that weapon a splash wall or even a beacon? Like, um, there are other things up above that can do the things that the sprinkler does um, and be less boring doing it. Ink mines, I think, are really annoying in that 
if you're going to make it strong enough to actually do anything, you need to make the radius at which it triggers absolutely bonkers enormous. You have to make it way, way too big for a lot of weapons in the game to reasonably sniff this thing out instead of just blundering into it. Like, a lot of the time, I will shoot one of these things by, like, painting in front of me as I try to move forward, and I will hit it with my shots, but the explosion will still get me because it's just that big of a radius and I'm that close to it. Um, like, the counterplay is supposed to be you paint over this and then you find it, but typically it's you paint over it and then it hits you anyway. So, like, what was the point of the counterplay to it? Um... And the reason that it's balanced is that it just doesn't do enough damage to really be that significant. Like, sure, it marks you, and that forces you to not play the game for a little bit longer in the same kind of vein as the point sensor. You're just going to play passively after that. So now the game is slower because this is in it. Um, and I, I like the idea in theory that, like, it gives someone, you know, warning that you're on your way. But a lot of the time it just feels totally random whether it catches someone or not. Um, and I, again, would just rather you have one of the other subs because then there's, you know, clear counterplay, it feels powerful, and it's not gotta be janky in order to be valuable at all. So that's, that's my crazy idea of, of how Splatoon should be designed. What's your crazy idea of how Splatoon should be designed? Comment that below and also comment um, with, with, with a picture of a cat. I know it's YouTube comments and you can't put pictures in there, but come up with a way to do it anyway. Yeah.